Good morning, YouTube. We're gonna reinstall the valve covers on my Ferrari 458. Pray for us. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience. And today, like I said, we're going to reinstall the valve covers in my Ferrari 458, so I am totally not looking forward to this. This is gonna suck. We just got them back from being powder coated, so they look absolutely incredible. I'm gonna show you them in just a second, and they are glorious, absolutely beautiful. So this project started off with just me wanting to repaint the intakes on my 458, and then we kind of said, you know what? We should probably do the valve covers, and then, well, now we're doing a bunch of stuff. We also are gonna be installing some oil catch cans. The 458 is actually a direct injection engine, so the, the valves get kind of coated up with gunk. So we're actually gonna clean those with some crushed walnuts in another video, so stay tuned for all that. But let me show you what we're going to do today. But real quick, before we do all that, if you want to support the channel, please go visit normalguysupercar.com. And there you can buy supercar parts and services that we sell. Use the code NGS10. It'll take off 10%. We're trying to hook you guys up as much as we can. And thank you so much to all of you that support us. Ah, yes. We have the loyal Bassett, the shock dog, Moses. How you doing, Mo? Yep. That looks about right. Okay, well, let's check out what's going on in the 458. All right, so it's been a few weeks since we pulled off the valve covers. So you can see, well, right now we have no intake and no valve covers. So we obviously need to get those put back in place. So what I'm actually going to do today is I'm going to take the valve covers and valve cover gaskets and we're going to put some like RTV sealant or whatever, the silicon sealant, whatever that stuff is, and basically use it as a glue to hold the gaskets in place because when we're holding the gas, when we're holding the valve covers to reinstall them, we have to hold them, of course, the right direction and those gaskets love to come loose. And basically once we get them in there, we're not going to be able to kind of adjust them very easily. Okay, here are the intake manifolds and the valve covers and you can see they just look absolutely perfect. So I was actually asking the guy at Enigma Coatings, the place where I got this done, why is it that these Ferrari pieces with the red crinkle coat always seem to fall apart? And he said basically the problem is they're actually using paint. So they're not using powder coating. This is actually a powder coating. Of course, you know, powder coating is much, much more durable. So they actually do have the textured feel. So it's the same that you'd get with the cool wrinkle coat or crinkle coat, whatever they call it, that paint. So it has that same texture, but this is way, way, way more durable. And obviously it's gonna withstand the heat much better than a traditional paint. So here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, first of all, kind of glue the gaskets back on to the valve covers. And then we still need to reassemble the intake manifold. So we're gonna do that and uh, just kind of get it all prepped up to be reinstalled. Okay, so any of you that saw me do the valve cover gaskets on my 599 know that when I had that at Josh's shop, he said the first thing you should do is actually take some brake cleaner and clean the gaskets. So I did that and there's like a weird film that is on these gaskets from the factory. I don't know why, but when you rinse them off with the brake cleaner, you'll see a bunch of black crap come off. So they actually feel a little bit more tacky now. So hopefully that's gonna make them number one, stick to this better. And second of all, they're supposed to make them maybe seal a little better. So we've got the gaskets for the spark plugs already in place. We got the gaskets for the uh, valve actuators in place. So now we just need to put the actual valve cover gaskets in place and then we'll start kind of popping in a bunch of these like screw, um, I don't know what they're called, like basically rubber gaskets with washers. Okay, so I've kind of test fit the gasket. You can see it sets into place pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of the RTV sealant and I'm gonna put it in critical spots. So like wherever there is a screw hole, I'm just gonna put a little dab of it before and after and kind of right here around where the screw hole is. So I'm gonna do that on each one of these screw holes and that should help kind of seal it into place while we kind of put this thing and arrange it and get it set up just right. All right, you can see we've got just a little dab of the RTV. Oh, there's a little excess I need to clean up, but yeah, we'll clean that up in a second. But yes, basically just a little dab of RTV at all the corners and at all the holes where there's gonna be screws. So that kind of, once we let it dry overnight, should keep everything in place while we're trying to install it. All right, we're gonna just let those dry overnight and uh, then we should be able to reinstall everything tomorrow. The next day. Good morning YouTube, it's the next day and everything's ready to roll. So we're gonna be able to get these in there. So here's what's going on is all of the 
gasket stuff I used is now dry. So you can see these are in there. They, well, yeah, little chunks we can get off, but these aren't moving. That's exactly what I wanted. So if we accidentally bump them, we're not gonna dislodge any of these gaskets and they'll be in the right place. So we'll be able to get everything all set. So the left side was a lot easier to do than the right hand side. So I'm gonna say we start with the left hand side first just to kind of get back in the group. We will have to be very, very careful to number one, not scratch the new powder coating, but number two, to make sure we don't dislodge the gasket. So those are kind of the two big orders of the day. If we can do that, we're doing pretty good. There is actually a specific tightening sequence. So once we get to that point, we'll have to get out the torque wrench and make sure we do the correct pattern. It's in the service manual. So I'll have to look it up in just a little bit. But uh, here we go. Let's uh, see if we can't maybe, hopefully, get these things in there. Okay, so I remember reading a while back about these stickers that were on some component in the valve train that can pop off and get stuck in the valve train and cause all sorts of problems. So I think this is what they're talking about right here on the valve actuator is a little sticker. There it is. It came off pretty easily. So I'm going to remove that and uh, make sure that that's not in the valve gut, in the valve train. And I think there's one on this side too. Yep. Why would they put a sticker on that inside? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> There we go. Oops. I went down to the bottom tray. Anyway, those are the stickers on the uh, actuators for the valve timing. If you're trying to figure out where they are, they're way up front. So we'll make sure to do that on the other side as well once we get in there. There's also some spots on kind of where the, the, the head comes up for the high pressure fuel pump. There is already some RTV on that. Before before we get these valve covers in there, I'm gonna clean those off and then add some new silicone, uh, RTV silicone, just so we're um, sealed up really nice and tight right there. And I'm also gonna make sure we clean the, the, the head really well. There's still some like gunk. All right, we're just gonna take a little bit of the RTV silicone sealant put it where it was on here before. hard to see it that is the torquing specs and there's lots of reflection anyway that's what we're trying to do <laughs> That went uh, surprisingly smooth. All right, I already got the sticker off of the top actuator. I gotta get the second one, but I gotta crawl onto the engine to do that. I'm also scraping off any of this old uh, sealant using a plastic scraper. I don't really want to damage this aluminum, and I kind of don't want it to fall into the valve train. Now oh, there's like way more hoses and shit on this side. Mm. A little dab. Where are these corners? Damn, so much shit. What? Great. Coolant? Oh, yeah. the cap fell off of that thing? Yeah. And it f I don't know 
where the cap went and it spilled right into the valve train. Where's the old caps or where's the other caps at so I can at least get you a cap? The thing we're changing the oil. That's pretty good. Now I gotta find that cap. All right, YouTube, this is the, the moment I have not been looking forward to. This one is much worse, partly because there's this coolant line right here, exactly where I need to be. Of course, of course. Ferrari. Hey. So we'll see if we can do it. It's gonna be joyously fun. Um, I think that the forward side's gonna have to go on. You're already hitting the coolant line. Yep. Didn't I like rotate it in like that? Yeah. You're not high enough even over the sensors. If that really helps. No, move. it didn't. The first one did kind of, but not the second one. Ow. Okay. I'm all right. I'm you can, all right. You can move your finger. No, I'm good. Oh, we're losing the fuel right here too now. What? Because uh, this thing's up. Just took it up there. Maybe I need to lay on the engine. There's that rubber hose that's ha that's in between the... Okay. But I don't see the gasket hanging. And it's hardest for me to see that corner over there. But I, it doesn't really look like there's anything. It looks like it's just stuff on the that little part right there. Yeah, that's what happened in the last one. Okay, I got it on and let me tell you, uh, it is difficult on this side. So what I did is I actually removed this rubber gasket, which goes around those two actuators. And that made it a whole lot easier. Uh, the question is now, can I get this gasket back in there now that the valve cover is seated? We're gonna try, um, but I would say certainly removing them. If I were to be doing this again, I would pull this gasket out before trying to pull the valve covers. That would have made it so much easier. And I, I bought new ones of these anyway. So like they weren't that expensive. They're only like, I wanna say like 10 or 15 bucks. So, so like just replace them. Yeah, just like, it rip it apart, get it out of there, and you're gonna be much happier. So anyway, we're gonna try to shove these in and then tighten them down. Okay, YouTube, so that idea of pulling out the gasket was a terrible idea, don't do that. Uh, it ended up not working at all, and then I knocked loose the stupid gasket on the valve covers, so I have to re-glue the valve cover gaskets. However, uh, Adam was a brilliant genius and got that hose clamp undone of that stupid hose, and then I went in there with a screwdriver and just yanked that sucker out of there. And now I'm like, you know, I think we could actually get it in there pretty easily. Not that stupid hose out of the way. Why we did that now instead of like, you know, I don't know, a couple weeks ago <laughs> was, a, I don't know, I'm just an idiot. Oh yeah, yeah, Megan's. Uh, <laughs> we're visiting the shop. Yeah, we're visiting, like, oh yeah, the light's so oh. bright. He's like, oh no, the light is too much. It is. It's too yeah. bright. Sorry, Ash. All right, YouTube, while we're waiting for those gaskets to dry on the valve cover, we're going to rebuild the intake plenum. <sighs> All right, it's kind of a cluster, so hopefully we can remember. Mo, do you remember how to do this? I think you do. Mo. All Mo remembers how to do is eat. True. Tell me how to build this thing, Mo. It's like, I just want to lick you and say hi. Okay, I'm getting your way. Thanks, Mo.
Okay, YouTube, we got the intake manifold back together and we've kind of let it sit for a couple hours, letting the gaskets kind of get uh, re-glued. So, and you can see I've got that stupid sensor, the, the valve actuators gasket back in place because we found out we can't install it without that in place because it is impossible to get that to seat. So uh, we're gonna give it another go and see if we can't get those valve covers back on. Pray for us. Okay, YouTube, it's uh, late at night, and uh, oh, let me show you where we're at. Yay, they're both in, yay. Uh, we put in basically uh, half or three quarters of the stuff that's on top of the valve covers, because uh, we still have to do the, so yes, we are gonna do the uh, intake valve cleaning using walnut blasting, so that's gonna be in another video, you're gonna wanna stay tuned for that. Uh, because of that, we actually had to pull off the bottom tray, uh, because we're gonna have to turn over the engine by hand, so. Uh, basically, this is as far as we wanted to get tonight, so that's, yeah, we did okay. Uh, basically, it took us all day. Um, when he says us, really, he means him. Well, I know. was here for moral support and, and little helped. odds and ends. Hey, you know hey, what? Hey, but you did the lion's share of the work. I'll give credit where credit's due. Hey, okay. oh, well, I appreciate it. But there's it. only a one-man, that's a one-man yeah, engine. Yeah, you can't have two people <laughs> shoved in there at the same yeah. time. So. so, yeah, whatever. Um, anyway, there we go. Valve covers, pain in the ass. I don't recommend this, but you know, not at all. It's uh, one of those that if they get scratched up or you want to redo them, well, yeah, I suspect this is probably at least a three thousand dollar job for a shop. That's my guess, three thousand, because it's definitely probably two days of work, two days of labor plus parts and everything. All right, so we're obviously gonna have more videos on the four five eight. So we'll be doing the walnut blasting on the intake valves. We still have to install the intake itself, and then I'm actually going to install those oil catch cans because that should help prevent the buildup. Yes, ooh, modeling, ooh. World's ugliest oh, model. which we sell those on our website, normalguysupercar.com. Use the code MGS10, it'll take off 10% of those. So my suggestion is if you own a 458, you're gonna want those and you're gonna see why when you see the condition of my intake valves. Even so, not just a 458, any direct any injection. Any direct injection, yeah. you want something like that. Especially at BMW. Yeah, Whoa. No, Yeah, they're notorious Whoa. for it, so. Actually, that's, I've been reading all the BMW forums about how to do this. <laughs> so we're going to translate that into Ferrari, which I think you know, translates well. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for supporting us, for liking, sharing, and subscribing. That does help us out. And of course, we really appreciate when you guys buy stuff through our website. Thank you so much to all of you that do that. But you know the drill. We're going to be doing a lot more car stuff, so you're going to want to stay tuned. It will be, oh, it should be sweet. Uh, it's going to be misery for us, though. <laughs> it's going to suck, <laughs> but it'll be sweet. Yeah.